Okay. Well, the first thing that we're going to go over is what is power factor. Okay, because that's the first thing we're going to need to understand. So on one of your pages here on your hands out, uh, you're going to see um, these two waveforms here. The ones with the hash marks here, these lines here, there's a current, okay? And what happens to power factor is the current waveform lags the voltage. Okay, this is what you're seeing here. And this is a demonstration of that, okay? The current waveform is getting there at a different time than the voltage. And the differences between the times they arrive is the power factor. So, when you have a resistive load like a light bulb, both of the waves are going through at the same time. There is no difference, okay? That's a resistive load. When you're doing a calculations for watts, is volt times amps gives you the watts because the bulb has a power factor of one because it's a resistive load. Now, when you're doing inductive loads, okay, it's different. They're, they're played with this power factor problem. It can never be one because that'll be a dead short. So, the further the waves are, the, uh, the, the greater the power factor and the less efficient the motor is. So what happens here is uh, big power companies, uh, large power uh, consumers, get charged a penalty for power factor because what happens is the meter can't read it accurately because they're getting in at two different times and so your watt meter and even the meters that they use uh, can't compensate for that and they don't know what the power factor is so the way they get over that is charge a penalty. So all these automated manufacturing equipments and uh, large power consumers get a, uh, a penalty charge, probably up to 25% of their bill, is just because of power factor problems. Because the generator, let's say you have a 100 horsepower motor in that building, and it goes uh, through the meter and then out to the transformer. Their generator still has to produce 100 horsepower worth of work. It's going to go down the line, get past the transformer, go through the meter, and then get to the motor, and the meter might just show 60 horsepower worth of work. Okay, let's say that. That their generator still has to produce 100 horsepower. Their meter, because of this power factor, is not going to read accurately. So what they do is they either force the company to get phase shift capacitors and shift the phase over, and that's all they do, so their meters read a little bit more accurate, okay? Uh, that way they reduce the penalty. So they go off and they tell these power companies, okay, well, if you put a capacitor, a phase shift capacitor on every one of your motors and bring your power factor up to 0.9, then we're going to give you a reduction. So that's what they force them to do. And then the power company has to come back in, uh, audit all the motors, make sure that all the power factor is up to 0.9, and then they're going to say, okay, we'll give you uh, another 15% off your bill now because I know that your power factor is up to 0.9 and it's the meters are reading accurately. Well, where is all that power going to? Well, the meter's not reading it, but it's being freed up at the transformer, okay? Um, what that relates to is, uh, for example, uh, when we take down some of our units, if you multiply the volt times the amps, okay, I would get a 32% savings on the air conditioners that I took down, but my meter really only realized 18%, because when I compared the watts against the watts, I can only account for the customer is only going to save 18%, uh, but we actually freed up 32% of the energy. The power company gets that and the customer benefits the 18%. So we lose some. There's a lot of energy there we can't make, make up for because the meters can't read it. And that's a big problem that you guys are going to need to know. There are companies out there now that all they do is install capacitors. And that's a big business. Okay, just to shift this phase over so they can read it right. It doesn't save any power. It doesn't extend the motor's life. It doesn't do any of that. It just shifts the phase over. And so the second part of this write-up is what relates to these large power electric bills, the energy charge, the demand charge, the power factor penalty charge, all that is described there for you guys for technical you know, information, and that's why I put that on there. Okay, um, That's the first thing that you need to know. So as we're going out in the field, what are you going to tell the customer, you know, what are we going to save? Because we're actually saving more than the meter is going to register. And you're not going to have watt meters big enough to take, you know, to, to be able to hook it up to these big central air conditioners. So you're going to have to take a clamp-on meter, and I'm going to show you how to work all this. This is about $54 here. Okay, everybody can afford that. And you're going to need to get a uh, amperage reading and a voltage reading, and then we're going to have to come out with some kind of a calculation. Because if you multiply the volt times amps, you're going to get a high number. You know, okay, that's what we're freeing up. But what is the meter going to read? There's going to be a difference there. So we're going to have to work with this. I don't know how I'm going to get past it yet. I'm going to have to, uh, as I go along 
and I'm collecting data for you guys. I'm going to be putting a flow chart together of everything that we've taken down and all the numbers. Okay, this is with PC 1.1 here. You don't have that, none of that. Okay, because I haven't tested this one out in the field yet because this is brand new. We'll get into that. Uh, but here's all my readings and everything, and I guess I'll start putting the power factor in there, and that should help you guys out, you know, when you're going out in the field and maybe doing some calculations uh, to give some kind of accuracy, you know, with it. If not, you know, this is a problem that you are going to face. You're going to say 32%, it's going to show up as 18, and you guys need to be aware of that. And that's the first major problem that, uh, with power factor that you guys need to concern yourself with. So the first thing we're going to do is, this is PC1, this is the baby, okay? When I first designed these, you guys were getting fixed and variable ones because I had to run two different programs. What the difference is, one has soft start, the other one doesn't have soft start, and one has like a six second delay because they were designed to take compressors down. So after I started doing some more engineering work out in the field, I realized that, um, that there's going to be too many differences between the motors and you guys are going to have to have some kind of an adjustment that you can make out in the field so that way you don't have to order between 16 different PCs. You know, give me one for variable, give me one that's not, that doesn't take it all the way down. You know, all this stuff comes into play. So we put these jumper pins in, okay? So you can select the 16 different profiles, okay? By removing one of the jumpers or the relations that they have and positions that they have in there, you can control 16 different profiles. So I put that in there. So you guys can control soft start, hard start, uh, what level of savings you want, um, adjust to the load, give it full power if the load changes, and we're going to go over that and uh, show you the differences so you guys have an understanding. Because when I go to a bowling alley, okay, uh, and I did an installation there, um, when I have all the pins in, it took that motor all the way down. And these motors have a little centrifugal switch here for the starting winding. When I shut it off, you hear it click off. Okay, you hear that click off? Okay. So when I did the bowling alley, I took it all the way down. It was just at the point where that switch was going to open up, and it opened up and arced. So that wasn't good enough, and the guy told me about it, and I says, well, we got to take one of the pins out. So I took one of the pins out, no more problem. Okay. Still saving a lot of power. You moved the set point up, but you didn't have to worry about it because we were really, really shredding that power down. So now it, the, the motor works great. So then he took it and he put it on another motor. Okay, and that same profile, now you have a different condition as the balls were coming in and the pins were being knocked in. It had a jitter, okay? It had like a little jitter, okay? So to eliminate that, you have to tell the PC either you're going to adjust to, sl to slight loads or as soon as the load changes, give it full power. And you can tell it to do that. And that's what these profiles are. Okay? So we'll go over the profiles here. Okay, profile one. These are the profiles you're going to be running. It has normal start, no lock to minimum setting. We'll get into that. No hold on full load. Okay, that means don't hold full power when the load changes. Don't hold it. Adjust to it. Okay? And, yeah, again, adjust to slight loads. So the first... Uh, the first four profiles are in this category, and the differences are going to be in the, in the different uh, point saving levels, okay, the set point. So the first profile, all the jumpers are in position. You're taking it all the way down. The absolute minimum that you can take a motor down will be in this setting, okay. Now, like I said, for the bowling alley, I had to take one pin out because I needed to change the set point to saving level five. I was still running these same parameters, Okay, normal start, no lock to minimum, uh, but I had to set the level up, and you will see it on this as the voltage changes. You'll see it, you'll see it on these gauges when we pull one of the pins out, what the differences are going to be. All right, so the first, pro first four profiles, it goes all the way down to set point, saving level seven. Now over here, you're telling it. What do you want it to do when the load changes? This is important. All the motors run differently. What do you want the PC to do when the load changes? Do you want it to adjust to the load if the load changes gradually? Okay. Or do you want to give it full power right away? Okay, that's where profile 5 comes in. Give full power if load changes. It's not going to try to adjust it. As soon as it takes the motor down and it notices a load change, it's going to give it full power and then take it down. That's how we got rid of that jitter 
in that bowling alley motor, okay? I had to give it full power as soon as the load changed. And that's how I corrected that. So in the same bowling alley, you might run three different profiles because the mechanics are going to be different in every alley. I mean, you know, something might be binding up on one a little bit more than the other. Okay, so these are the differences. Okay, now again, then you go down and then you can set the different uh, set point saving level. Five, this is four. You can go to five. So I wouldn't run this one at, you know, set, uh, saving level four because I already know that's just a little bit too much. So I would use this one here. Give it full power when the load changes and a set point saving level five. And then I can run this one. And this is the profile that I would run. Then, once you start getting into seven, now you got smooth ramp up engagement. So now you're going to soft start. So those are for motors with uh, belts on it. Uh, that takes the impacts off the bearings. It extends the life of the belts, the bearings, and all these other things for machine tools. Uh, anything that has a belt and a, and a pulley on it and things of that nature, that's what you want to use this, the, uh, the smooth ramp up engagement. And then you have, you're telling it it's going to adjust to the load. And the set point saving level is four. So this is the one you start off with. Again, now you start going down further. You got smooth ramp up engagement, adjust to the load, saving level five. Then again, you're going to continue with that smooth ramp up engagement, adjust to load, set, set point level six. And then from there, profile 10, now you change something else. Up here, you're telling it to adjust to the load. Then you can tell it to give it full power and then adjust. There's a big difference there, and you're going to run into it. Okay. So as soon as the load changes, give it full power with soft start, and then adjust to the load. And it continues down with the different levels, and it gets up to number 13. Okay, now number 13 is different. Now you got smooth ramp up engagement, give full power if load changes, and do not lock out on error. What that means is this PC has built-in diagnostics. You're going to get a flash out code from 1 to 5 if there's a problem in the motor. Okay, it's going to try to tell you and it's going to give you a flash out code. So when you hit or when you're running profile 13, you're eliminating that. And you got to be aware of that. There's no more safety in it. You're taking the safety out. That might be for a drill press. You don't have to worry about it because the load might be changing drastically in it and you don't want the PC to get confused and error out telling you, okay, hey, there's something wrong here. You know, this thing is changing too much. It might notice that and might lock out and give you a flashing code. So you don't want to do that with power tools and things of that. So you'll be running this profile here. Okay, that means smooth ramp up engagement, give full power if load changes, do not lock out on error. Then you continue with the last profiles. Do not lock, fix minimum on lock, we'll get to that. Okay, and then do not lock out on error. Okay, the different power level savings, or the saving level. Okay, I made a mistake there, that should be a six. And then the last one, the last one is the only one profile that you'll have to run in this category. This means that when profile 16, when you're running profile 16, if the load changes, let's say we, we started this drill, and we're going to show you on this. Uh, when the PC takes it down, it's going to remember that number. And now you're telling it to, when the load changes, hold full power on, don't make any adjustments. Just continue to hold uh, full power on until the load is gone. Then once it notices that the load is gone, then it'll take it back down. Okay, so that's the only profile that you have that will do that. Okay, that might be for something that's cutting a piece of metal. Let's say you have a cutter of some kind, and the metal is coming through, and as soon as it touches it, you give it full power, but it cuts for like one and a half seconds. You don't want the PC to be adjusting, you know, through that time. You just want to let it make the cut, wait, have the thing, you know, the other piece of metal will come in, then it'll cut it again. For applications of that nature, you might need to use that profile. But it is there. If you, if you guys need to use it, and we'll run over it now, and you're going to see how it works. So those are the different profiles that you guys will have, different power level savings, soft start, no soft start. You can just about tell it what you want it to do, adjust to the load, give it full power. You decide for that application what needs to be done, okay? And like I says, bowling alleys, you might run three different profiles in one, just in one place because every one of those motors are going to be different, okay? And you need to re you know, realize that. You got a question? Oh, okay, never mind. He's had a mistake here. You're just going to see uh, the saving level 6 right here. I got it on twice. It's a little typo. Okay. Uh, profile. Yeah, profile number Yeah, 15, is it? Okay, yeah, profile number 15. Set point, saving level 6 is supposed to be there. Okay. So now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to run this with PC1 and we're going to show you what happens. I got all the jumper pins in, so what profile am I going to run? I'm going to run number one. What's the saving level? Okay, so that is the maximum that I can save. So let's see what happens. Well, the whatever is there, okay, whatever is in the motor, you're going to take it down to its absolute maximum uh, saving level. I was going to turn it on. Oh, not on. Oh, it's on that. I'm just going to sit here and uh, sort of watch what Carlos does and be the dumbest person in here and ask him all the stupid questions. I know you guys are afraid to ask him. All right, go ahead. I won. Okay, I won. All right. I told him how long would it be when you get in before you open your mouth. I said 15 <laughs> seconds. I won. <laughs> so, I told him 15 seconds. It'll be 15 what seconds as soon win? as you want. Oh, nothing. I just made a bet with him. Oh, I didn't. I didn't bet him for anything. He was arranged, and he was supposed to bet you guys 100 bucks. Oh, I didn't bet him that way. Carlos. Oh, yeah, I, took right. I took it easy on him. I took it easy on him. Okay, we You're got the PC down, hooked buddy. up. Now, all right, turn it down. I mean, turn it, flip the switch down. I'm not going to flip it down. Why? Because it tried to suck my tie in last time. Okay. Now, I went to green right away. It should be reducing it. Now, it's going to blink. Okay, what's the voltage? 75? 76. 76. Okay, the amps. You can see there was a difference in amps. Or okay, about 4.5, 4.4. Okay. Did you guys notice where it started up at? Do you want me to plug it and override the PC so you guys can get the readings of what the motor does without it? Okay, you want me to... Okay, let me just turn that off for a second. Let's see where that's at, okay, without the PC. I'm sorry, I started off too soon here. Okay, let's start it up. Go ahead and turn it on. Okay. You can write those numbers down. That's without the PC. You got the readings? Okay, everybody see where it's at? Okay, go ahead and shut that off. Shut it off. Okay, now I'm going to plug in the PC. I was going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Go ahead and start it. Down. I don't know why you don't have your assistant here. I didn't bet him anything. Okay. Now, uh, somebody write the voltage down. Because I'm going to take one of the pins out so you guys see the difference. 75. 75? The amps? The amps are 4.4. Uh, and the watts? 75 volts, 4.4 amps, and? The watts are 100. Oh, let's see, that's uh, what we got for the definition here. 150, 200, 250, 245. About 250? About 240. 245. Okay, so now we're going to shut the PC off and we're going to pull one jumper pin out. Okay, so I'm going to run profile number two. So you can go ahead and shut this off. Okay, and I'm going to take one jumper pin out to bring the saving levels up one notch. So you take one jumper pin out. Okay, maybe the motor does not want to be taken down all the way. Okay, and you need to set at another point. So, uh, Make sure you unplug the PC and replug it back in so you can reset the uh, program, okay, when you make that change. Do they know which one of these are jumper pins? Yeah, I already showed them you prior to that. seen, okay, right where the jumper pins are. <coughs> okay. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. You should see a different voltage.
Okay? All right, about 85. So we're 76 to 85. You see the difference now? You moved it up another notch. You're not taking it all the way down to 75 volts. You just moved it one notch over. The watts should be pretty close. Okay, the watts are yeah, just 240, 240. So the watts were hardly effective. But you got a little bit more voltage in there. That's what that motor needed to have at that bowling alley. Okay, just that one little jumper. Okay. The amps are down? Okay, she's locking into the phase angle and everything, and she knows, but you can see that the, the voltage is different. Okay, and that's what happens when you're taking one jumper out, expect about a 5 or a 10 volt difference per uh, jumper. And that's the control that you guys have. Now, what's going to happen when the load changes? Okay, I'm going to try to put a drastic load on it, and you're going to see it readjust. Okay, let's see if I can get it to do it. It worked for me yesterday. Let me see if He's I can get it. Loading it. There it goes. All right, now I loaded it, or I changed the load. Okay, now it's going to wait, and it's going to start to readjust. Because you're still running that program. You're telling it, hey, the load changed, adjust to it. It's dropping back down to like 80 now on volts. Okay. 81. All right, and it made the adjustment. Okay. Because now I'm going to take all the jumper pins out, and we're going to run profile 16. So when the load changes, it's not going to make the adjustment. Okay, so this is going to be the difference here. All right. So go ahead and shut that off. Okay, let me take all the jumper pins out. And now I told the PC that when you take or when the load changes, do not make the adjustment. Okay. Go ahead and turn it on. Wait a minute, it's, it ain't finished yet. Got to watch the lights. Okay. All right. Okay, it's like the same one it was before, okay? Because the saving level is 5. We're running the same set point, 5. So now let me change the load. Let's see what happens. Okay, let me see. I got to get a load change. Okay, now I'm going to hold it. The, the uh, load changed... And now I told the PC, don't adjust. So I'm going to hold this on here, and you're going to see that it's going to stay red, stay red, stay red. It's not going to make any adjustment. And it's going to hold. These, these are the different profiles. You understand the differences now? You're telling the PC what, pro what profile to run, what program, what is actually happening. And as long as the load is different, because it wrote to itself and said, hey, I know when I'm loaded, when I'm not loaded. So now I'm going to unload it, okay? Now it's going to take it down. It should lock right there. Okay, you see the difference now? Okay, you guys have control of this and you need to be aware of that. That's what the profiles do. What do you want the PC to do? At what saving level? All these things come into, you know, come into play because there's no, you know, no adjustments. Just pulling these pins out and you're going to run the 16 different profiles. So you guys need to know that. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. Okay, that's, uh, so those are the profiles. And is there any questions now on the profiles or anything like that with this PC? See, now, in other words, in this machine, you have to be smarter than the machine. It's smart. It's got a brain of its own. But you also, at the same time, have to make sure you tell it what to do. We had no way to do this any way other than that. We'd like to design it to where it just figures all these things out for itself. All we need is your fingers. Okay, but we do need your fingers. Right, so you can... you got to remove those plugs to tell it what to do. Right, so that's what the 16 profiles are, so you guys are aware of that. Like I said, you can go to a bowling alley and run three different profiles on 24 different motors. All right, you have to sit there and observe it, but you have that kind of control in this PC program. The, the saving level, the different... Uh, set points, what do you want it to do when the load change, adjust to it, give it full power and then adjust to it, all these things. Okay? So you have a precise control over the profiles and also over the application. Okay, so any other questions? And if you don't know exactly what he's doing or how he's doing it, you need to get a copy of this videotape and show it to 
a local electrician in your area, and he's going to know everything about what Carlos is talking about because he's smart like Carlos, right? Well, he's going to need to know about the profiles. You got a question, Charlie? I'm wondering what is one of the main indications that you're going to need to switch jumpers. Is the motor going to uh, jump back up in power? Is it going to drop it and then all of a sudden jump back up? Or is it going to uh, not work correctly? What, what's one of the main What's the indication of how to run a different profile? Well, that you need it. Let's say you put it on one profile and it uh, takes it way down, maybe too far. How do I know it's too far? If it looks like less watts, to me, maybe that means it's good. Right. Am I going to hear something go crazy on the motor? or it? Um, like I said, in the particular bowling alley, you might get that switch arcing, okay? And then you know that you've taken it down a little bit too far. And the switch arcing is from the uh, centrifugal switch. The centrifugal switch the opening up because we've taken that power down, you know, a lot. And then when the loads are coming in, uh, it's adjusting to the load, but it slows it down just a little bit to kick the switch out. And so you need to pull one pin out and bring the voltage up to the next level. You're still going to get almost exactly the same amount of watts, okay, but you're firing it at a different phase angle, okay, basically. Okay. Uh, and you're bringing the power level up just a little bit to get it past that point so when the load is changing, it doesn't, you know, open up. Because, like I said, you can take it to another one. Let's say you took it up to another motor, like we found out, and then that same profile on a different motor in the same bowling alley, now as the balls were coming in and the load was changing it had that little jitter okay because probably the gears or the mechanical arms and devices there was probably a little bit tighter on that particular lane and so every time that the load changed it jittered a little bit so we wanted to take that away but we're running a profile that says adjust to the load when the load changes so to eliminate that you tell the PC hey when the load changes give it full power and then adjust and then that's the profile you're running. So that way, as soon as a ball hits and it sees a load change, instead of that jerking, it's going to give it full power and then take the power back down. And then you'll get past that little jitter. I see. So and rather than it taking the time to figure out what, how to adjust to this momentary yes. load, you just bypass that, let it get full power, right. and then the next time you get a, a stable load, yeah, you and then it readjust. Yep. That's what you want to do, and that's how you get rid of it. Yeah. So, so an indication of that would be something where the load is on for just a, a, a few seconds at a time. Yeah, you'll see it in the motor, you know, when you're, when you're there and you're observing it, you know, you will see if there's something that doesn't work 100%, then, you know, you need to probably find a different profile. If, yeah, if it tries to adjust but stays red and then it, the uh, ball's already returned and you never see it turn green, then you know that never, that was a waste of time. You should just put it to that jumper where it... Uh, it doesn't even try to adjust. It well, just forgets the, about it. Yeah, the first yeah. one, okay, it was in the blinking green, and the balls were coming in, and it was adjusting to the load right. Yes. And no problem. We had to remember, we had to set the point to five, but it worked perfectly. Now, the other one, as soon as the load hits it, it'll go to red, and then the ball is gone, and then it takes it back down. Mm -hmm. So it's only for one second that it gave it that full power because the ball hit it, and that's what was causing that little jerking, you know, little jerking motion, and then it was okay. So, uh, because the other one stayed in blinking green because the load changes were so slight, but you're telling it, hey, adjust to the load. Don't give it full power. You know, don't send it all the way up and then take it back down. And that's where your savings are for that longer period of time where it can has time to adjust to it and then stay at a reduced power. Yeah, that would be the maximum. When there's no ball being loaded up on that belt, which is most of the time. Yeah, which, bo yeah. which motor? Well, like for a ball return. Oh, for the ball return, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that thing is free spinning, and the ball return, it had all the, all the jumpers in. Okay, right. because when the ball hit it, it was such a big load change that it gave it full power anyway, and it sent the ball up, and then it got, you know, the ball left, and the load was off, and then the PC automatically, you know, adjusted down. I'm talking about the pinwheel motor, which is a big wheel that's spinning, okay, and that's the one that you might have to run the different profile. The ball return, forget it. Four pins in, you got it made, okay? It's going to give it full power as soon as the ball hits it, okay? okay? And that's the difference. Any questions? Okay. Um, all right, so I explained some power factor correction, what the problems are. We have some test results, and like I said, we're saving more power than the uh, watt meter is capable of showing us. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do now, I guess, we're going to move right along. Uh, I'm going to show the new PC. If there's no more questions on PC 1.1 or the smaller one, okay, I'm going to go into the multiple motor one. Okay, now, after I after our initial field test and we were testing the things out in the field, we realized that using two of them, uh, there wasn't enough energy savings in there to, to be feasible. So I said, well, I'm going to need to change the design. I'd rather take two motors down and average the savings out versus, you know, two units uh, on the same circuit. So I had to redesign that. And that's some of the delays that we ran into. And so this is what we came up with. And, it, and it's a good thing because uh, we're going to be getting a patent on this because nobody else does this and we had to develop a whole new technology just to be able to, to do this. Okay, so this one you're going to be getting, this is a 3 to 7 horsepower power controller and it's going to come in this style of casing er, in, in here with a 40 amp triac and this heat sink to dissipate the heat. And um, Okay, so that's how you're going to get it. Now, if let's say you have a central air conditioner, you can take down the compressor and the condenser motor at one time, and you can average them out. Whatever you hook up to this PC, it's going to take it down. Okay, you have an adjustment. The way it's going to work is, I'm going to see if I can set it from the factory at a certain point and see if that works for you guys, or you guys are going to have to set it right from the get-go. Okay, if I set it to a preset, okay everything that you hook up to it, it's going to try to maintain this certain level. And that'll be automatic. Now all I got to do is plug it in. As soon as you plug something in, it's going to take everything down. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you. Okay, we're going to start off with, first of all, we're going to fire this noisy thing. And I got my watt meter here and stuff. And I'm going to turn this on so we can get some readings. Now that jumping and that pulsing is the Brown's gas machine. You can probably see it on this gauge over here. Okay, I'm getting a line drop. That's a good test because you can see the PC. Oh, well, it's drawing six amps. Okay, one, one meter, six amps. Okay, and you can hear the noise, how noisy that motor is. Okay, let's make an adjustment. Okay. Now you're talking about a major difference there. Okay, now we took it from 6 to 2 amps. You can basically adjust it. It's going to be very, very hard to burn a motor with this because we're using a brand new technique. This is a brand new science. And we're doing a lot of things. I'm not going to disclose to you why, but it's going to be very, very difficult to burn a motor up. You can take it just about all the way down, and if it can't go all the way down, it's just not going to do it. It's just going to cycle between that. So when you're setting this, you got your central air conditioner. You're going to be hooking up your amp probe. Okay, and you're going to hook it on one leg. If you try to hook it up over the whole thing like this, you're not going to get any reading. You need to hook it up to one leg, okay, and then you can make the adjustment. Okay, you see the current going up. And you need to back off of it until you find a point where the current does not go down any further. It might start coming back up a little bit, then you know you went too far. Just back off a little bit and you're set. All right, so you'll be using amp probes like this to tell you exactly where the optimum setting is. Okay, so now we have one motor running. Now I'm going to turn on another motor. Okay, and I'm going to turn on this light. Okay, to show you uh, how it adjusts to the load. Okay, now it gives it full power and takes it back down. Let me set the voltage. I'm going to bring it way down now. That blinking is the Brown's gas machine. But you can see with the line fluctuating that the PC is still capable of locking it on. Okay? Low changes, it's going to give it the power that it needs and adjust to it right away as soon as I take it down. Okay, let's turn on another motor. Okay? And let's take down this one too. Go ahead and turn it on. Motor comes on and notices the load. Takes them all down. As many as the triac can handle. That's 40 amps total. 
Okay? So it has to equal 40 amps. So here we're going to... Wait, I'm going to take one more down. I got five. So here... I got five motors. And I'm taking them all down. Okay? Now, you want it automatic. Everybody, somebody says, hey, can I have this automatic? You want automatic? Okay. You want automatic? All right. Let's see. Give it a second. There. That's automatic. significant that would show us how it was automatic well I preset it it was already set the potentiometer okay like I said so you guys we did it right I already set it and the PC is listening to what you're telling it to do from this point this is the level that it's going to take it down to it's going to run the program adjust to the loads and everything else but this will be the final determination of how far should I take it down and you can take them down really really far let's take it further down We're talking about, I'm really reducing the power now. It slowed down a little bit, but at least the current didn't go back up. Okay, so we're doing things that were basically impossible to do with very acts and things of that nature. You couldn't pull a motor down this far and have it even function. Okay, so now you're dictating how much power you want going to that. Because we're controlling pulse width, uh, the pulse width, power factor, all these things are coming into play now with this new PC. Okay. So now, like I said, all right, you got all these motors going on. I'm going to take off the big one because it's going to key off the biggest load. So I'm going to take this off. It might, it might notice it. Let's see what happens. Okay, I can still see any kind of changes. It's going to try to lock it in even with all these motors. Any change is going to adjust, you know, to whatever it is that you connect it. Do you guys have any idea when you show this film to your electrician, make sure you have a clean handkerchief because he's going to want to cry and you want to be able to help the poor guy out. <laughs> this is an impossible task, okay? <laughs> Nobody else can do this because it's, hard, it's very, very hard to analyze more than one motor. And even in that write-up that microchip did, it tells you one PC per motor. And that's what the challenge was. And we had to develop a whole new science and a whole new technology just to be able to do this. Carlos, that's, that, that's incredible to me because you got a, a resistive load plugged in there too. You that's right. Bolt. Even a resistive load in it and it's not flickering. I, <laughs> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Don't tell him. How am I going to tell I him? I need him. Huh? Don't, Don't tell him. I need him. Okay. And now if I shut everything off, it knows it's a resistive load and won't try to do any correction on it. But now since it's in circuit and we have something to analyze, it can still do the resistive load without making it flicker or anything like that. Okay, it's not blinking or anything like that. Okay, so it's very, very smooth. The pulse width is being affected and the uh, phase angle is being affected. All these things are coming into play. And we are the first ones to be able to do this. So this is brand, brand new technology right now. So it's worth the wait. I'm sorry about the delay. That's my fault, not his fault. But I had to... All right, I had to develop a whole new science to be able to do this. That's our fault. Yes, it is. It's our fault. Oh my God. What? It's our fault. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's our fault that we developed it, okay? So you can see, you can adjust it here. I can really take it down. It should be really going down. Do you know what this technology's worth? Okay. That, I mean, that's, that's this motor this motor, that motor, this, no jitter, because this motor, marketing rights worldwide. if I put that PC on this one, this one would develop a jitter, because it's trying to track too fast, and this was a very, very hard motor to take down, but we can take this one down, that one down, that one, this one, we got five motors, it doesn't matter what you hook up to it, load it up, well, if you load it up here, well, we got a lot of things going, let me unplug one of these, Okay. Automatically adjusts everything. It's going to adjust. 
Now we have some line dropping, okay, and it's still holding it. And we got a, what, a 10 volt fluctuation? And we're still holding on, okay, because the PC, you're telling it, hold it here. So if the voltage is going up or down, it's still holding it at one point. This is the reference that you told it to hold it to, regardless. It doesn't care what the line is doing, anything like that. You're telling it, hold it on here, and that's it. I'm holding it at this point, and whether the voltage goes up or down, you told me to set it here, and that's where it's going to set it. Okay, you guys got that? Any questions? Hold on, let me turn this back up a little bit. and Let's see how far we can take this all the way down now. Okay, what happens if you try to take it down too far, it's going to go into this blinking mode here. That means you've gone way too far with it. Okay? This is probably going to show up on your amp meter. Okay? And then it's going to kick back off. So you back off. Okay? That's what's going to happen when you take it down too far. We need your fingers. To steady it out, okay. Yeah, like when we take down a motor, you're gonna you're gonna notice that the current goes up. You're making the adjustment, so it's going to take everything down till it gets to this point. It's going to always try to compensate, and we're compensating for a lot. But there is going to be a point where you're going to slow the thing down too much, and the current is going to have to go back up. Okay, so that's what happens when we got here. Now let's see if the Brown's gas machine will help us out. Let me see if I can get it to go into an oscillation. Okay, there's the oscillation. It's taking it down, flattening it up. 40 amps with this circuit. Okay, so when you get to this point, back off, set it. Go ahead, go ahead and shut this off. Shut this one off. Hey, Carlos, there's two PC units that Better World has now. Yes. That one and that one there. Yes, this is for single motors. Okay, let's say you're, gonna, you're not going to go to a bowling alley and put an $80 unit to do this guy's job. Right. You're not going <laughs> to do that. So this one has all the applications for the bowling alleys, the washing machines, uh, single motor applications. Okay, now when you get into taking down multiple motors, you know, because maybe there's not enough savings in this one particular one. This is, this is the machine shop here. This is the machine shop. So that's what it is. We haven't tried it yet. I mean, you know, it might yes, be interesting. Yes, yes, we will be using it on a Brown's gas machine, and we'll let you know what happened. We don't want to tell you what we think will happen anymore. We'll tell you what we did. We will do that. But here you're talking about a machine shop. So now you've got multiple motors. What are you going to charge somebody to be able to pull down multiple motors in his machine shop? That's going to be up to you. Is there any way without destroying this, we can lift that up and show that on the video where we can actually see where you adjust this? Yeah, I'll do it back on. You can see we got a resistive load. Can you get a real close up on that, see right exactly where we... Okay, and those is a resistive load. Okay. okay. And you can see the bulb is on. Even if I That's adjust where it... That's it's at. See where he's putting his <coughs> screwdriver? Okay. On that little blue thing. Even if I adjust it, it's not going to so do that's anything. That's where he's, in the adjust he's adjusting it. That's a resistive load. Okay, it knows it's not an inductive load. There's nothing for it to measure. It's going to ignore everything I put onto it. Okay, but now I'll turn on a resistive load. Okay, and I'll turn something on. We'll turn this motor on. Takes it down right away. Okay, we'll turn turn on another one again. It'll give it momentary power because it was a voltage drop. Okay. And it's very, very fast. It'll have the different profiles to choose from, to run different profiles, maybe some different things, soft start, and all these other things are still going to be available, okay? You'll just be able to set 
the saving level. Okay, how far down do you want to take this application? Okay, so instead of doing it with the jumper pins like this one over here, that's pre-programmed, you're going to need to do it with your potentiometer. Okay. That's a far setting there. Or bring it back up. And you can hear the vibration on that motor when there's no, no power factor correction or anything like that. Okay, so we're making the adjustments. You can get really, really quiet. Okay. And like I said, it don't matter. We'll run this one and a half horsepower on it too. Like I said, go to your local electrician after he gets done crying. Tell him he can get involved in it. Hey, Carlos, Carlos, is, is there any reason that PC there that you're working on right now, the bottom is shaped like it is? This is the prototype. You're going to be getting it this way. All right, guys, this is the prototype. I just, we just finished delivering this baby. Okay? This is the three to seven horsepower that you guys are going to be getting, but it's going to be in this box. We were just talking about all the bowling alleys and whatnot and taking them down. Couldn't you take down like five lanes with one of those as opposed to putting five? No? Okay. No, because you have five different things going on at one time and it's just trying to adjust, okay, all these different times. You're not going to benefit from it because you got one alley coming on and the other one comes on and the other. So it's giving it full power, giving it full power, giving it full power. And not only that, you then have to hook all of them up in series. And your installation's going to be a nightmare. Right. You'll have to rewire the whole thing, and it's just not going to... It's like trying to do 20 washing machines at one hard. time. Right. They're all doing different things. What do you want the PC to do? It's always going to try to compensate. So it's compensating all the time, and you're not going to get any, uh, any savings. So for individual motors, you want to use a little PC for washing machine, bowling alley motors, things like that. Now, the gas-heated dryers, though, have two dryers on one circuit. You might want to take both of those down with the bigger unit because their loads are a little bit closer to each other. You know, they're spinning the tumbler, okay, and you can average them both out on a dryer. The washing machine is too, too many variations going on. I am making a flow chart, okay, here on all the findings that we have. It's not complete yet because I haven't fully retested this circuit yet, but you're going to be getting this. I guess uh, in another manual that I'm putting together, all the voltages and watts and savings that you can expect to get on the applications out there, so that'll make it easy for you. Okay, and the other question was, we were talking about yesterday, you go into these different places and you take an inventory of all the motors in there. Now, are we going to be uh, talking a little bit more about that? Okay. About yesterday, maybe it'd be better for everyone. Okay, yeah. Uh, you want to go into a place, and what you want to do is you want to write down every motor, freezer, the applications that they have in the building, okay, uh, and you want, I have a sheet that I'm going to include probably in the newsletter, the next newsletter that you guys are going to get, I'll have a sheet that I already made myself, so when I go out there and I'm writing all these things down, you want to write the phase, the application, the running time, how long does it run, so then that way when you're done with your audit, you can pretty much get an idea exactly what you're going to tell, you know, your client, hey, I can save you this much, and I'm going to need, yes, Right. Yes, it's going to vary in every place. Exactly. And you're going to present that to them, you know, as the because these I mean, these are all the motors that you have. You know, they're going to need to know all that. These are these are all the power controllers you're going to need. These are all the motors that you have. Single phase, three phase, all these things. Okay. One one other thing. One other thing, and I don't think this was on, but uh, one other thing. You guys are the research lab. So when you go out there and you set these and get used to them and you do different applications that aren't on the sheet, please call Carlos. Please give us feedback on what you found out. All that data that you get from the field is going to help them in research redesign the equipment to do what you want it to do. 
See, you guys tell us what you need. That's what we're here for, to try to make it happen. Not necessarily be able to, but we're going to try to, okay? Right. Give us the feedback. Right. Also, just one other thing, Carlos. Mm -hmm. We have the orders here for people who ordered merchandise. So anybody that ordered merchandise, if you walk right outside that door, we can get your orders. We'll just small talk here for a minute until you get back. Okay. So if you order merchandise, walk out the door. They'll give it to you. You can come right back in. Well, number. Here it is. FS3L. 3L. In the Granger book. This will do up to 300 amps. Okay. This will work on everything. Yep. Big motors. Okay, whatever the rating, this the track is rated at 40 amps, so you can run 40 amps through this circuit. So whatever is attached, as long as it doesn't equal 40 amps, you got one and a half. This one is drawing, let's say it is full load. Uh, it tells you right here your amperage is going to be 20.4 at 115 volts. Okay, so you can run two of these motors with one power controllers, full power. I mean, if they were Heavily loaded. Yeah, this is 220, 115. Okay, so really, yeah. Yeah, you're going to, well, you're going to go into the circuit breaker. Yeah, whatever's on that leg you're going to take down, it's going to be either 220 or 115. They're not going to have, well, only on the washer they have it mixed when they're running, but they have two different feeds going out, you know. Well, you could install it at the circuit breaker. You're going to have to make that determination when you get out in the field, okay, whether where's going to be your easiest. Um, we Go ahead. What was it? Uh, where you want to install it. Okay, um, he asked me, where should I install it at the panel? Where, where should I install these? Well, you guys are going to have to determine that out in the field. It might be easier in line, or it might be easier at the circuit breaker. Okay, that's, you're going to have to determine that. Yeah, you could mount it at the circuit breaker. Make sure that you follow the codes or the electrician installs it, because you might have to put one of those flexible conduits in it, you know, to hide all the wires and make sure it's up to code if you are going to put it, you know, uh, up against the circuit breaker box. Your adjustment, I'm going to try to put the adjustment right here next to the LED light, okay, so that will make it easy for you guys, okay. So that's where I'm targeting to put the potentiometer at, so that way you don't have to go inside. There's going to be two potentiometers. The one that you're, that's going to be exposed is the ones you're going to adjust. The other one is for setting something different. You're probably never going to touch it, okay. So this will be mounted either next to the panel, make sure that it meets the codes, or in line. You know, either you got uh, all this machinery going on and you're going to have to cut it, take a piece out and then you're going to get ends that screw into here you can take these ends out if you want and then screw the pieces on okay wire everything up and then make your adjustment you know and do it that way so it's a universal application of how to make it as flexible as possible anything else Dave uh, after seven horsepower you get into three phase and we are going to be coming out with three phase applications okay we have this one this one we're going to have three phase okay and then just about every horsepower range in three phase possible go ahead Dave yeah Carlos uh, observation while you were tweaking the circuit with all the devices going um, it went unstable went into that oscillation yes when you took it down too far and we also had the Brown's gas machine running off the main but not on this particular leg um, is it possible you might get into a situation in the field where you set up everything on your circuit and tweak it but something else in the building might come on at a later time and the if you're in a building unstable? and you're having a line drop like this you got a big problem okay everything in that building is going to be affected and you're going to have a major problem there's no way that a company is going to allow that to happen this is just here because we're running the Brown's gas machine so it's very very doubtful that you're going to have a line fluctuating this bad 
because everything that's attached to it, just think about all the motors in that whole building having to do this. Okay, they're going to have to correct that. But if you do tweak it and it sets it down, and in case that does happen and it does isolate, it's going to just keep oscillating until everything stabilizes and then it should lock on again. Okay, so it's just going to keep kicking out. It's going to try to follow the line. But you can see that's a 10 volt drop in the line and the PC mm -hmm. can still hold it when you tune it right. Okay, uh, and it's going to pretty much stay there. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to knock it off once you have it in the right mode. Because remember so when I packed? If you tuned it here, with a Brown's gas machine not running, and then after you're done tweaking, someone turns the machine on, you know, out of your control. How does it respond? It might go into an oscillation. I'm not really sure. I mean, you know, but if it does, the worst thing that can happen is it's going to oscillate. So okay, you should ask all the questions you can of your electrician when you're on site. Like, what's yeah, but like I said, that is going to be, if you have a 10 volt drop in line, you got a big serious problem. David, you might do another thing. The other thing you might do is you might teach their handyman how to uh, tweak it. Right, if they need to be set it. Because if you've got a factory it. or a machine shop, he's not an idiot. And so you just say, hey, look, you get an oscillation, here's what you do. Usually when you're setting these, you're going to be in the factory, everything is going to be on. So whatever the drop in the line is, that's what it's going to be really tuned to. Okay. You know, you're going to have all the machinery going on, so if there's any voltage drop in the line or in the building, the circuit is going to be already tuned for all those drops, okay, because that's how you're going to be tuning it. You're not. It's going to be very, very rare, very difficult to have an oscillation this big. I think it's like a 10 volt. Is it a, what's, my, what's my voltage range here? Wait a minute. It's, where's it flexing? So we got what? A, that's a very, very big. Okay. Uh, with 20 extra ones. Okay, so you can keep them around in case you lose one or whatever, and you need to put one in or take one out or whatever. You, but you can get these at Radio Shack and just about any electronic store. This is the jumper that goes on the PC. Okay, these little teeny things here. You might need a pair of needle nose or something to take them on and off, whatever the case may be. Okay, and like I said, you can get them at Radio Shack. And uh, if you want to try, you want to try firing up all the motors and setting it up and see what happens. Is that what you want to try to do? With the oscillations? Go ahead. Are you looking at the possibility in the future of using single phase current to run a three phase motor? Yes, we will be making three phase su power supplies. In other words, from single phase to three phase power supplies. Okay, solid state. No. No transformer because what they have now, okay, this is the major problem. You got a warehouse, they're building all these things, you know, and they're going to be renting room out or whatever. There's no three phase power there. It's too expensive for them to do that. So, the only other thing that they did was make this 10 horsepower motor run off a 220 and spin a three phase generator to produce three phases. But you got 10 horsepower to make seven horsepower worth of three phase, you know, energy. You're losing three horsepower right there because of the inefficiencies. So we're going to make a solid state one. Uh, uh, huh? hey, hey, Carlos, could you say that again? Because when you said it, his eyes got about the size of that apple there. I'd like to see if he, if they got as big as the apple or almost uh, as big. Okay. Just say it again. I want to measure this. Okay. And uh, <laughs> for three-phase, we're going to have three-phase power supplies and then three-phase power controllers. Because if you already have three-phase coming in, there's no need for me to generate the three-phase. So you're going to have a three-phase power controller taking down that application. But we're also going to have power supplies where you can hook up multiple three-phase motors to, let's say we got a 10 horsepower three-phase generator that's generating three phases from single, I mean single phase, okay? Then you can hook up at least 10 horsepower worth of three-phase motors to this application. The old way of doing it is, like I said, a 10 horsepower motor spinning a generator to produce the three phases and it's very, very inefficient and it's about $2,000 and you have this motor moving around. We're going to do it all solid state. Okay, and top of the power supply, all in homes in the future, okay, are going to be three phase. Okay, so once we start to introduce this, this is probably something that might need to go in every home. You got to have all these contractors be aware of it, all right, so we can start ushering this new era of technology and, you know, and, and power and stuff like that. So, you know, this is going to be, this is the way it's going to be in the future. They're going to change all these motors here from single phase to three phase or reluctance. 
motors, which is like a six phase. Okay, that's the future. Washing machines and everything. Already England is starting to produce three phase washing machines. All right, because there's a big efficiency. You want to take down a home 50% guaranteed with your air conditioning bill, put in one of our three phase power supplies and replace a compressor with a three phase compressor. You got a 50% reduction right there automatically without any power factor controls. Now, somebody said, why aren't they already doing that? Isn't, didn't he just explain why they aren't already doing that? Okay. Good. Because one way you sell a lot of electricity, one way you just don't get to sell enough electricity. Darn. Yeah, of course. Available <laughs> yeah. for what? Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, like I said, we're going to be moving into three phase now because we just completed baby number two. So uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is probably produce the power supply. And then we're going to have the three phase controllers. And there's going to be at least half a dozen you know, different lines just in three phase alone. So we can do all, you know, all the three phase. Okay, like I said, that they are going to go to three phase in the home. This is the future coming. This is the beginning of that era right now. Power controllers, I guarantee you, you know, many years from now, there isn't a single motor elec or electrical device that's not going to have some kind of intelligence. Okay, like what we're putting into practice right now. This is just the future. It's about time we got intelligence in electrical devices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, with all these things happening, we need to be praying for our inventors, our staff, and all the dealers every day. Yeah, well, I'm hey, working. Now, you're starting to sound like some kind of a cult here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is the cult thing. Yo, we, ought to, <laughs> <laughs> we, we ought to actually, what we ought to do is try to get God in General Electric and all the people that are building these motors here. Maybe we wouldn't have to do all of this stuff. Maybe uh, maybe Steels and Deals could do a special on General Electric. What do you think? <laughs> That's up to them. I don't want to. All I want to know is PCs and stuff. That's why I'm not <laughs> even going to get involved. In. I don't want to know nothing about them. Okay. All right. So questions. That's, yeah. Any questions? Dave, you want me to run? I'm going to run these things again to try to make an yeah. adjustment. See if yeah, I can go into an oscillation. Get an oscillation. Let's find out. Let's see if we can go into an oscillation. Somebody fire this motor up. Down. Okay, I'm going to see. We got a lot of line loss here. A big fluctuation in line loss. So I'm going to see how... You see, right now... You're getting a line drop, and there's no problem with it, okay? You're not going to set motors down to 58 volts. Okay, that's usually not going to happen, okay? So you got a big range here to work with, all right? If you can, you know, you need to fine-tune it, of course, but at 58 volts, man, I, <laughs> right now it would be impossible, really. If you try to tell somebody that you can run motors on 58 volts, they're going to tell you you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just not going to happen. Well, we can do that because of what we're doing here. So I'm going to take it. There it goes. Now I'm going to take it further down. I took it all the way down. This is as far down as the potentiometer is going to go. It seems to be locking in. Okay, you can see that once you start taking it down this far, you can hear it slowing down, and you don't want to do that. So you're not going to bring it down that far. So back off of it. In case you can see the the RPMs are slowing down on the blower, because I mean I got this thing cranked down to way down there, 56, 55 volts. You don't want to go that far. There, that's at 70 volts right there. Okay, you still got the line loss. Okay, and it can still make up for it. Okay. You got a big surge going on right now in the lines, and this PC is still going to compensate. Okay, it's locking on to where the setting is. Go ahead, Charlie. So if you don't bring it back up, if you just cross the line where it's no longer oscillating, 
it's possible that a line loss in the building might knock it back into oscillation. That's that's possible. So maybe you want to raise. Right, you might want to, well, you guys are going to get the feel for it out there. You're going to encounter this if you're backing off too much. I mean, this is brand new. So you're going to be the determining factor, okay? I highly doubt it. you're going to run into that problem, okay? This is something that might be a very, very rare thing because if you've got a line fluctuation, like I said, of this magnitude in this factory, you're going to have a big, big problem, all right? So this might not happen. So... Yeah, you might want to back off. I guess I guess experience is going to be our best teacher with it, but I don't think you're going to have any problems with it. You know, I'm going to back off of it a little bit more. You know, uh, maybe let me try cutting it down. You're not going to run the motor because you already heard this one slowing down. You're right there at the threshold. Okay, you're already affecting its performance, so you don't want to run it that low. And I can still hold it. Okay, right now I'm still holding it. All right, so you want to make sure it's running properly. That's a 73 volts, 75 volts. Okay, you're backing it off too much, you know, you're going to slow something down, back off of it. That's up to you. No, that's the thing about it. You can see, watch the current. You're looking at the current. Usually with something else, if you try to take it down as far as we're taking it down with this unit, the current's going to go way up and you'll burn it. But this is not going to allow it to happen because we're controlling the pulse modulation, okay, the pulse width. Okay, so it's compensating. As you're moving the reference point up or the voltage up, it's only going to fire the triac with a smaller, smaller pulse width. So it'll keep the motor from burning up. You won't burn it up. You'll see that the current probably is going to start to go up. I'm going to back off of it a little bit more. Okay, the watts are still going to probably stay down. Tell me when the amp starts to come back up. Okay, now it's overriding. It's not going to allow me. What's happening with the current? The current. Is it starting to go back up now? Four and a half? Okay, he's going to kick back out right at that point. I'm at the threshold right now. No, I can't reduce it. Right there. Four now. Four amps. Four amps, 75 volts. Yeah. It's going to be hard to burn a motor up with this, you know, because we're controlling, remember, the pulse width and the firing angle, the phase angle of the wave. You know, you wouldn't be able to bring a motor down this far with a variac or anything of that nature. Okay, you're going to have to control the pulse width and things like that like we're doing with this unit. Okay, so there we go. You have it right there. We'll bring it back up. Oh, I just blew my circuit breaker. I got too many motors on this little leg here. I did that yesterday. I'm surprised it lasted this long. Okay, and like I said, it's for automatic application. I could preset it at the factory. I am not sure if I want to do that but I'm going to get some feedback from you guys and you guys tell me you know so I'm going to set it right there and if you want it automatically you're plugging it in and it's going to take everything down automatically Okay. Whatever the setting is, let me set it down.
Okay, to show my ignorance, the meter on your pole, when they're measuring, is going to be determined by the volts, amps, watts, a combination, or what? Yeah, if you see this motor, if you multiply the volt times the amps, you're going to get a watt reading. But what this watt meter is actually reading is going to be less because of the power factor. The transformer still has to do the full amount of work. It just can't be measured by the watt meter. Okay, and so the same thing happens to the generator at the uh, generating plant. Okay, and that's the power factor problem. All right, so when we use our formula, when we're taking things down, for example, that uh, that air conditioner, the central air conditioner, the watt, I mean, the uh, yeah, the meter itself is only going to show an 18 percent uh, savings, and in actuality, we took it down 36 percent. The other 18, there's nothing I could do. The power company gets that back. We're nice guys, you know. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we got to see there are different places in Texas, I think, that every power company has a different incentive programs for energy-saving devices and stuff. So you need to find out about this in your local uh, power companies, okay, uh, especially uh, if you're doing um, phase shift capacitors. If you're going to go into a building and you're going to be doing power factor correction and they don't have any, any uh, phase shift capacitors in all their motors yet, you should not only take and save them power on their meter, but you need to talk to the electric company and also tell them to give them the discount for the penalty. You know, there's got to be a power factor penalty. Because the other companies are going in, they're putting a capacitor in, and they're getting a savings. You know, they're knocking some of the, they're, they're, uh, they're knocking the 25% down, maybe to 20% or, or 15 or whatever it is, because they're putting in these capacitors now. And now you're doing the same thing. Not only are you correcting the power factor, but you're reducing the consumption of the motors, you're extending all the motors life, so you're really doing a lot more. And if it worked and they were giving discounts for just putting capacitors in, you should also benefit or that or your client should also benefit from the uh, the PC being put in there. So not only 20% reduction in their whole entire bill, but if they had a 25% penalty, that should come down too. So they might actually realize 35%, 30% savings that way. You guys need to read it. I wrote that in the second half here. Okay, maybe I'll include more in the next write-up. All here, all these, all these factors that it, that uh, affect the large power consumers. That's something that uh, that the company would have to know the power company of, or that they would. Yeah, the power companies now. You know that they're giving discounts for just putting capacitors in. That's already being done, so they can eliminate that 25% penalty just to fix the power factor problem. So if you go to a building and they don't have capacitors in there, not only should you correct that for them with the power controllers because you're correcting the power factor, but you're also saving them on the meter too. So you're going to get a really big savings out of it if they want to work that program. And they can't deny you that because they're already giving the discounts for the capacitors and they don't do anything except shift the phase over. Okay, that's, you know, that's what's happening now. So they got to be able to, you know, they got to be able to do that. You got to prove to them that you are doing a power factor correction. And we can prove that easily. Okay. Charlie? Okay. Anything else? Well, you guys are easy. You guys are really easy on me. No question. Well, will that affect when they're on a demand meter? The demand Over meter? that power? Because when they go over up in New York, that's on that 15 minute thing. I can probably do maybe a 20 horsepower unit, so it'll be triple of these, you know, three of these. One main controller, so you're probably looking at, uh, roughly speaking, to do something like that, a 20 horsepower three-phase motor. You might be looking at um, maybe $350, you know, $300, somewhere around there. I don't know yet, but it'll be three triacs because we're going to try to condense. We, probably, we might be able to use one microprocessor to do all three of them. Or we're going to have to use three different processors. So this is what's going to determine the price of the units. Okay. Also, what what is that's not it doesn't have a UL label on there, correct? Yes, this is UL pending. You know, I just got this two days ago. <laughs> yeah. All right, but yes. you've already submitted it. Yeah, this one is already submitted there. This is UL pending. So if anybody asks, this is UL pending. But you're going to run into something else. You guys are going to go to these big organizations. The first thing they're going to ask you is. What kind of liability product uh, insurance do you have? 
Like I can't even go talk to these uh, AMP people <coughs> without some kind of liability insurance. So the power controllers is going to have a million dollar policy that we're going to make available to all the dealers once we get this paperwork done. The label, you mean? Once you get the label? Uh, uh, well, no, we're going to get it before you even get the label. You're going to have the insurance policy because some people don't even care if it's you all or not. You're not going to sit down with their boss or the owner of the building until you have a policy. They don't even care about the UL. The main question is the insurance. We want to know, make sure we cover. We don't care about the UL or anything, but before you put anything on my stuff, I want to see if you guys are covered. So uh, you're going to have a $1 million policy with this one, and I suggest that you guys get an insurance policy for, uh, for yourself because you're going to have people going out and installing them and things of that nature. And you can probably pick up a, a good million-dollar policy for about $2,000 or you can, let uh, me see, Bob mentioned it yesterday. He got a, four, a $3 million policy that covers everything, his salesmen, the installations, anything that can possibly go wrong. But that's about $4,000 a year, you know, for something that expensive. You're going to have a big crew out there installing and, you, you know, salesmen and all these other things. Okay, so that's going to be important, too, because you're going you're to run into that. It's going to be one of the first questions they're going to ask you. So it's UL pending, and I'm going to be getting some paperwork for you guys for the... Uh, the uh, insurance, the product liability insurance, because you're going to need that to do the installations. Okay, what else? <coughs> Charlie, you're good. Uh, They're paying you for this? You're the guy we paid? I get paid anyway, regardless. <laughs> um, I'm wondering now, you've got all these motors here, and you mentioned different types of motors induction motor capacitance start motor or, or how do I know the difference okay how do I know one will work it, it's, it's going to work on one versus another one this unit here it's not going to work on capacitor run because the phase has shifted over in other words a capacitor run or a split phase motor is they're trying to make a two phase out of a single phase so they shift the phase over and you're going to see two capacitors on those motors they're usually five horsepower you're going to see one here okay and then they'll have another one Okay, you know that's a capacitor run motor. That's a split phase. This one will do anything you hook it up to it. So it'll have a capacitor to start it and, and a, a capacitor, capacitor to, run. to help run it also. Right. And they're trying to get two phases out of a single phase, so they shift the phase over, okay, and they delay it. That gives it an extra push as it's it going It gives it around. an extra push, and it makes it a lot more efficient. Right. You know, you try to run a five-horsepower motor just with a capacitor start circuit. Oh, man, that'll be terrible. You're going to have to, you know, that's what they did to try to get a better efficiency. And, yeah, it is a lot more efficient than the standard capacitor run motor. So you're saying that a lot of the higher horsepower motors that are single phase might likely be capacitor run, uh, run motors. Yep. Okay. We can't touch those at this point. No, yes. That's or we you can with that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No matter what you attach to a capacitor run, split phase, it doesn't matter. You know, it's gonna it's gonna get the job done. That one, no, because they shifted the phase over. It's not going to work properly. That's why even in this write up that microchip did. You know, I just redid a lot of it, but this is really microchip. Microchip is the one we get the microchips from. They're made by microchip. Uh, they even say here, you know, each motor must have its own control circuit because taking multiple motors down was impossible mm -hmm. till today. Okay, well, really, to a couple of weeks ago when we discovered this. So that's, this is an impossibility. This is like that guy on TV. You know, well, that's impossible. Yeah, well, I even thought it was impossible, too, until we stumbled across some very interesting things that gave us this kind of capability. So this is brand new. I mean, brand new. I just got, like I said, I just got this circuit, uh, what was it, two days ago? Okay. You, know, you never saw it before, neither. So, I mean, that's how brand new it is. And and it's not in this, like I said, this is not the circuit, okay? This is the prototype. Okay, that was the second time that guy, uh, somebody else asked me in the other class, hey, is that the way they come? No, that's not the way they come. Okay, they come in this thing here, okay? <laughs> you know, this is where they come. Uh, you should, UCS of A should start getting those within four to five weeks. Okay, and that's what the big delay was. I'm the one that hit the brakes on all that, okay? So I had to redesign it. But it was worth the wait because we came out with a far superior product now, too. So the delays is worth it. Huh? Yeah, it is, right? Right. Yep. That's where we had it. It came out a lot better than we anticipated. Let's put it that way. Okay, you know, this is a lot more. This is, you know, this is the dream come true here. Okay, I wanted one that... Uh, 
and we just stumbled across it. You know, we just stumbled across it. What it does, you know, I, the one that I was designing, uh, I showed it in the uh, last month. You know, it was just a manual one, and it kind of locks into the phase angle. It doesn't use pulse width, and this one is using pulse width and phase angles, and that's a big difference, okay? And that's why we can monitor all the motors and control them all. Okay, that was the secret right there that we stumbled into, so. No, because you don't know how we do it, okay? I just tell you, pulse width is nothing new, and phase angles is nothing new. How you read the waves and how you control the waves, then I'd have to kill you. Okay, and the same thing with this one here. This is basic, basic ride up. Okay, we use basics, but how we analyze the wave and how we control the wave, that's our secret. That's why we're the best at it. Because there's something happening with the waves that a lot of people and NASA doesn't even know about. What is it, Charlie? What? I want to know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you got, you've primed me now. I, I need to know that. I see. Yeah, you're getting edgy. Oh, tell me. No, he's willing to die. No way. That's gonna. I'm going to keep that classified. You'll have to read the patent. And then after you read the patent, if you ask me, I'm not going to tell you. Okay? Okay. All right? I'll have to figure it out. All right. That. I'll let you figure it out for yourself. <laughs> now, what? you say we need the clamp-on meter. Yes. I walk in. I have a PC. I go up to someone who's got whatever, a supermarket or a bowling alley or something, I should have a watt meter also with me, right? To show him the watts that his meter is actually reading. Well, That's remember, when you're doing big power units, you're not going to hook that watt meter up. You're burning exactly. thing up. You're going to need this. And you're going to have to give him the calculation, volt times amps, and you're going to get a number. And then you're going to have to shoot for half of it at least. You know you're going to hit that. So if whoever you're talking to is going to have to have some understanding of power. Uh, like Basically, you're the one. I'm going to be the one, but I'm going to have to sell it to someone like a store owner or uh, yeah, we, well some maintenance guy in a, in a supermarket or in a, uh, some Yeah, you're going to have to explain that to them, you know, and like I said, the problem is going to be when you guys get out in the field, what percentage are you going to tell them that the meter is actually going to read if you don't have a watt meter because that's the actual way exactly, you're going to find out. So what I'm going to do is from the information that I get, I'm going to start writing the power factors down. Okay, that I got, and it's going to be as close as possible because you got to remember one thing: as the load changes, so does the power factor. Okay, so everything is changing. You know, you started off with the power factor of six, but as load changing, it's changing. You know, the power factor is changing. So when I write these things down, I'm going to write the power factor of that motor down, so you guys have an idea. So when you go go out into the field. You know, maybe you'll have a reference sheet and you can say, oh, okay, we did this uh, three and a half ton air conditioner and it was running a power factor of 0.65. So I'll take my volts and I'll multiply my amps times my power factor and you can give them some kind of a calculation from that point on. This is what you should get, mm -hmm. you know, at least this. Okay, even though we're saving more power. We're, like I said, it's nice guys. The power companies are going to love us for that. Well, and then they're going to hate us for taking the rest of the power down. Exactly. So they're going to love us and hate us at the same time. Don't you like that? They don't know if they're going to love us or kill me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you guys were late. Oh, you oh, okay. Well, the second round, you didn't get enough the first time, huh? Yeah, look at that. Uh, any questions you guys have? Uh, did you see the multi one the other day or something? Okay. They didn't see the... Yeah, did you see that? Did there be five motors at one time? Okay. Uh, not on tape. <laughs> not on tape. Huh? Oh, well, you guys got me on videotape. You can roll me under the bus. <laughs> you know, I have, I have more things to say, but I can't say it. You know, because I don't want to get into a... Uh, uh, all right, my hands are tied. So if you turn the camera off, I can tell them. There you go. Both of them. So you guys can't smoke me with it. And if you hit the off button, then I'll let them know all the, all the stuff. You got that camera on? Try to go across both legs, you're not going to get anything. 
Okay. Once you set your current, okay, then you can put these pins on it because this is a volt meter too, and it goes up to 600 volts. And this meter here can handle up to 300 amps. Okay. Am I set? Am I on? Okay, this is uh, something that Ward put together, and uh, we will be, if, like I said, we get enough requests, we can put a demo unit together for you guys this way. Okay, it's going to have a voltmeter here, which I'm waiting on. I just <coughs> ordered it, but you're going to have an amp, and you're going to have a volt. Okay, and then you can show them, you know, the percentage that you're taking the motor down, because a watt meter, uh, I mean, the cheapest ones start at like a hundred dollars, you know, so. You know, we have to make it feasible. So you have a volt and amps here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let's see, let me plug this thing in. Okay, and you can see it work. It's a good unit. Because a couple of dealers asked me last time, oh, can't you have something, you know, that'll do this and that? And, and so Ward had this. And I told Ward that I'll show it. Okay. This is the way he'll show it. There's without the PC. Then you hit the PC. Okay? And you can show it this way. So when you're doing demonstration, it's kicking back out because of the line fluctuation. And the PC really isn't designed to take a motor down this small, but it will do the job. Okay? And that's what Ward put together. So if there's enough interest... What about the light? What about the light? Oh, the light? That's for something else. We'll be trying a different thing there. Okay. It'll have, uh, what we'll do is we'll have pockets here so we can put the brochures in. Okay. Jumps to $11 per kilowatt. Dollars. I don't know how that, w that is working actually. You need to, f if you find out any more information on how that works, I know they have. Uh, I think Ward was telling me that they have a the regular meter and then they have their peak demand meter or something also, and they charge you for peaks or something like that. But I'm not really sure how that exactly works. That usually happens when they've got a bunch of motors, like in a hog operation. Everything else is running normal, and then every so often they have to wash everything down, and that kicks in three or four more motors, and that's when they usually get hit with that peak. <coughs> Oh, so yes, they, they're averaging out on the full maximum. Right. Uh, they're charging you the peak, okay, t uh, an average. In other words, you might have turned that motor on for an hour, mm -hmm. but the peak demand went all the way up, and they're charging you from that gauge, that peak demand, over the whole day, right? No, it's 15-minute intervals, I think. That 15-minute intervals? That's $11 per kilowatt whenever you're in that, from $0.11 cents to $11. Well, how does that work? So they charge you for every 15 minutes? 
What are they doing? It, there's a certain length of time that kicks in. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I you need like to ask them when I was talking to them about that. But it jumps to eleven dollars per hour or per kilowatt when they hit that peak for a certain length of time. Hmm. I'll have to find out about that, but I heard about these uh, peak things. I'm not really sure how that works, but I think is what they do is they turn everything on, and the maximum, even though you've shut down motors or something at one time, that peak dem or that demand meter was all the way up, let's say, uh, and then uh, because you turned down three motors to wash everything down while everything was operating, the peak demand is going to go up. And that meter doesn't move. Once you once you move it or something, uh, from what Ward told me, it stays there. So then I think they, they take that and they figure that into the whole cost of the building, whether you're using that much energy or not. I think that's the way. I think was what Ward was telling me the other day. So we need to find out about that also. They're kind of like ripping you off there. <laughs> you know, that ain't going to work too good. So um, let's see. What else? Yeah. Then will you make the PC that will be compatible with that? In other words, you'll be. Yeah, we'll have already. You got three phase, so we'll have a three phase PC to take it down even further to correct for the power factor. Because now you're going into three phase, you're not going to save as much. Okay, let's say you're not going to get 30 percent out of a three phase motor. But when you're talking about a 100 horsepower motor, 10% is 10 horsepower. Okay, that's 10, you know, that's 10% of the 100 horsepower there just by making this power factor correction because the three phase motors are a lot more efficient than the single phase. So, you know, a guy asked me, I says, well, you know, are we going to save as much? No, percentage wise, you're not. But you're talking about very big motors. Okay, you're talking about 10 kilowatts. You know, let's say um, the 100 horsepower, uh, you reduce it 10%. Okay, that's going to be 10 horsepower worth of saving. So that's going to be 7.4 kilowatts of power for every hour that that motor's on. Okay, so it's only 10%, but you're talking about 7 kilowatts of energy because the motor's big. Okay, it's a big uh, inductive load. Uh, they go from, uh, let's see, on, uh, on these buildings, I did a survey on a building. They have, to bring the water pressure to this whole entire building, they're usually running a 40 horsepower three-phase motor that are running 24 hours a day, and usually every building has two of them to get the water up and the water pressure up, and they just switch them. So they're right there. You knock 10% of that off. That's 24 hours a day. You're talking about a lot of power savings you know, over a month just in that one motor. The elevator is the same thing. I went up and I looked at the elevator. They got two 25 horsepower three-phase motor powering a generator, and I think they're converting that into DC. And then the DC motor is the elevator motor, okay? And that's how they work the elevator, at least the one that I saw. And they're running 24 hours a day, too, whether the elevator is doing work or not. So you're looking at a lot of power saving there also. Even if you're knocking 10% of that off or 7% or whatever, you're talking about it adds up, okay, when you're talking about three-phase. Who else? You got a question? Single phase, yeah. yeah. Anything above this, usually you start getting to three phase. Yeah, but I'm saying like an elevator is going to have a much bigger motor than that. Yeah, three phase. 25 horsepower. Okay, so you are intending to build one that? Yeah. We intend to build. If you guys are out there, okay, we have a guy working on Radio Shack, okay? Um, I will build something if, it's, if there's a market for it, okay? I, I'm a field applications engineer also, so if you guys run into, for example, Radio Shack wants to buy 25,000 of them if you can get it to where they like it, okay? That's worth me building. They want a nice custom box. They want to plug in. It has to be in a certain price range, totally idiot proof. All right, 25,000, all right, I'll, I'll have the injection molding box and all these things designed. Three-phase motors, they range from 10 horsepower to 500 horsepower. So if, uh, and you're talking about 500 horsepower, you're going to be looking at drivers in a big box. This ain't going to be no little teeny weeny thing. It's going to be an expensive thing. But you're talking about a lot of power savings there, and you're extending the life of that motor, which they're seriously uh, into. Uh, you mentioned, uh, just mentioned idiot-proof box. Uh, this is for Radio Shack. Well, for Radio Shack. Well, uh, I'm wondering, you, you're changing uh, jumpers, 
Yes. Okay. You've got all these different connections inside. Sixteen different settings. Yes. Correctly. Correct. Okay. Is there any chance that you would have a box where on the outside you can hit a switch or several switches or something that's not? Well, maybe uh, you don't have to pull the cover off and. Uh, for this unit here, I don't know yet if I'm going to change it over to this one because, like I said, it costs. It's going to bring the cost up on the smaller unit. Okay, and um, it, you'll have to make that adjustment versus taking the pins out. But I don't know yet if that's going to be cost effective now, if that's going to bring the price up too much and change the price on this little simple unit. The one that I build for Radio Shack, I'm going to build it to this specification so it can be, so they can adjust it, you know, and it'll do the multiple motors and everything, but it'll be a small unit, you know. But like I say, they buy in lots of 25000 They can private label it so they won't compete against us. Okay, and then I think you guys benefit from retail sales. If somebody sells a store and it's a retail store where they sell it out to the general public, I think the dealers uh, get a piece of that. Okay, and because if now there's a difference, now if you go to Toys R Us, I got to fly to California, uh, I think in November, and do an audit on a million square feet distribution center because they got thousands of conveyors. Mm. Now, if he gets that contract to do all the Toys R Us, that's that dealer's market there because it's not going out to retail and those are the two different so I might be looking at that I got to do a brewery it'll probably take me two months to walk through that place it's a 300 million dollar uh, brewery that I got to look at and I got to go do some audits on some hospitals and I will be meeting with the owners of A&P shopping centers uh, and we are doing bowling alleys now so as soon as I get testimonials and stuff I'm going to be passing that out to you guys you know, the testimonials to help you guys go out, you know, and, and get the uh, credit that we deserve to get. Okay. What else? What? No, just that's great. <laughs> okay. You said seven and a half horse motors. Is all that you're running without going to three phase? There are some seven horsepower motors that I know of, single phase motors. Well, we've uh, got a lot of 10 to, 10, and 10 to 13 horsepower motors running on. Uh, 220 on the farm right now. Oh, okay. Uh, well, give me, uh, call me up, give me the amperage on it, okay, and then I can probably fire a bigger triac and make a special one for you, okay, if you have enough applications for it, yeah. Well, all I'd have to do to control something like that, if they, that's very rare, I mean, 10 horsepower, that's a big single phase motor, that thing must be super inefficient. Okay. Uh, all I have to do is get a bigger triac. I can probably do it, but you have to call me up and let me know what the uh, amps are, and then I'll tell you what the difference is going to be to put a bigger triac on here. Okay, but I can still do it, yes. But usually when I, when I looked in all the books, usually seven, uh, a seven ton or a seven horsepower motor was the, where the cutoff point was when they started going into three phase from the motors, I mean from the books and everything that I was looking at. But there might be some special applications, like in your case, where they might be ten horsepower you're going to have to call me up. That's going to have to be a special one that I'm going to have to put together for you. Okay. Austin, I know you got a question. What is it, man? Actually, I was kind of wondering. Um, when you have the circuit hooked up with all five motors on it, and you increase the load on, say, this motor, is every other motor, like, contributing its energy that already had been set for by the power controller into that new load? Yeah, it's averaged out all the energy there. And so now you're telling it, give me a little bit more. And it's taking away from what, whatever uh, these are it set for? It should be. If it doesn't give it full power, it should just be giving it enough to compensate for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, all of them are coming up at the same time. You can see by the gauges over here. That affects everything. But it's... Um, it, it's Okay, you take all the motors down. You average them all off. you got a certain amount of current going through it. Now you load this. The voltage drops, and it's going to try to bring the voltage back up. Yeah, it's going to have an effect. All the motors are getting more power. They're all getting more power? The power yeah. control actually controls that it doesn't come just from the set circuit? Yeah, it, they're all getting more power because they're all hooked up to the same thing. So they're all going to be getting more power just to compensate for this one here. So, so the green yeah. light will be flashing on that power controller and readjusting the energy in the circuit? Excuse me? The light on that, like uh, the power controller would readjust the energy that's coming in on the circuit? Yes. When you increase the load? Okay. Yeah, that's when I was doing this, and you can see it. It, it dimmed, and then it got brighter. It's trying to compensate. It's trying to hold it at a certain point. But, yeah, all the motors are getting power. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's got to make up for that. So it is getting all the market and power. Okay, so that's you know that's just the way the circuit works. You guys are easy. Uh, I noticed an interesting phenomenon on one of them when you had the individual power controller. Uh, let's say on this blower, you'd load it, and it would knock it down even further. There'd because be even less current and even less voltage. Because you're taking the load away. I just changed the load. In reality, I wasn't loading it up. You just changed the load. Because remember, when I let the air go through, the veins have to grab the air, and so you're dragging the air around, and you're making it work harder. When I block it off, it's, it's actually less of a load then. Yes, it's less of a load. Less of a but uh, the PC drop. is concentrating on any load changes, whether it's less or more. You know, when you tell it, when the load changes, what do you want it to do? It doesn't matter if it's more or less. What do you want it to do when the load changes? Adjust to it or give it full power? Mm -hmm. Same thing here. I, I'm actually taking the load away, and it kicks it back up. Okay, it's a very drastic change, and so the PC knows that, and it has to give it full power again, so the motor won't stall. Okay, so that's what we're doing. With, that's why you've seen it draw less. Yeah, because it was doing less work. Okay. Dave? You got that look on your face? Uh, on the three phase that you're going to come up with, how yeah. many horsepower is that going to go up to? Well, the way I'm going to do it is we're going to have one microprocessor controller to do uh, various ranges of uh, horsepower motors. And the way that's going to work is you're going to be buying drive kits. Okay, you got one controller, so we only got to build one. Then you're going to have a drive kit with these certain size triacs to handle 10 horsepower on down. And then we get the next set of triacs that will handle from 10 horsepower to 40 horsepower. Then you'll have the next set from 40 to 80 horsepower. And it'll all be just with one controller. So you'll be buying different drives with just one microprocessor. You're probably going to have a couple of different variations because we're going to have to add some safety features to the three phase because some people might request that. Like to turn on an alarm if you have one of the line losses. Okay, let's say we got three phase power coming in and we got a three phase power controller. If something happens to one of the lines, sometimes you got to sound an alarm because you'll burn that motor up. And so some companies want alarms on them and stuff like that and you'll have different microprocessors that you could use uh, either to interface with computers so they can sit behind an air-conditioned room and control all the motors uh, to that, to turning on alarms and telling you which phase is out. I mean, things like that. So there might be one main one that can do a bunch of them or you might have different options available just with the microprocessor control unit and the different drive circuits because you obviously don't want to use something that you would use on a 40 horsepower to do a 10 horsepower three-phase motor. It's just going to be ridiculous expensive, you know, to do that 10 horsepower unit. Okay, the same thing. You don't want to use a hundred, uh, the one that'll do a hundred horsepower motor to do a 10 horsepower neither, because they're going to be expensive. Okay, so these drives are going to be, they're not going to be like these $80 ones. You're talking about triple the amount of circuits. Okay, so if I was going to do uh, probably this triac right here, three of them handling 40 amps each, I can probably do. Let's see here, 40 amps per leg. I can probably do, let me see what that comes out to. Okay. See, it'll make a nice demo unit. Like I said, the line is fluctuating too much and this PC is kicking it back out. You're not going to have this problem when you hook it up someplace else. See, it's locking in there and then it's dropping too much and it's kicking back out of it. So, like I said, we'll put the, oh, I am making brochures too. All right, I'm making professional brochures. You can hear the vibration on this, it's terrible. Uh, we're going to price it out, you know. Um, what we need to do is order, I mean, you know, you guys need to let me know. Is it worth putting together? Do you guys want it? That's what you guys got to let me know. Okay, I already had, no, I had a lot of requests for it already. Because it's real easy. <coughs> this... You know, this is as easy as it gets. I mean, you know how much better you want it. Okay, that's the Ward Special. Okay.